JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 14th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an, an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian se session Thursday. It underperformed uh, the most versus GBP, the Euro and the Canadian dollar in that order while it, while it was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc. Now, the weakening of the greenback as well as the weakening of the safe haven franc suggest that investors' appetite may have, may have improved yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that although major European indices traded mixed, Wall Street rebounded decently with the optimism rolling into the Asian session today. To be honest, with hopes over an imminent resolution in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine diminishing, and with most major central banks hiking or preparing to hike more aggressively than previously thought, we don't see a clear and valid catalyst behind the rebound in equities. Perhaps it was a short, a short covering bounce. We will hold the view that the path of least resistance remains uh, to the downside. Now, European investors may have adopted a more cautious approach, uh, perhaps because we have an ECB monetary policy meeting uh, scheduled for today. When they last met, policymakers of uh, this bank kept all three of their main interest rates untouched, as was widely anticipated, but decided to end their asset purchase program in the third quarter without hinting that any interest rate hikes will be delayed due to the geopolitical tensions. President Lagarde uh, said that the risks to the economic outlook have increased uh, substantially, but also added that inflation could be considerably higher than forecast. Now, combined with a large upside uh, revision to the inflation forecasts um, for this year, this suggested that most policymakers view the risk of high inflation uh, overweighing uh, concerns on how on how geopolitics could affect uh, uh, could affect um, economic uh, economic growth. Now, back then, uh, the outcome of that meeting increased speculation um, for higher uh, interest rates in eurozone later this year, with market participants pricing in. Uh, 50 basis points by December. However, in the aftermath of that decision, President Lagarde warned that the Fed and the ECB may move out of sync in the foreseeable future, as uh, the war in Ukraine has vastly different effects on their economies. Now, her remarks raised questions as to whether officials will continue paying more attention to inflation and thereby decide to lift uh, rates later this year. With peace uh, hopes vanishing on the, on, the, on the geopolitical front, investors are pricing in only one quarter point uh, increase in December and not fully. They assign around a 70% chance for that to, to happen. So the latest pessimism is also reflected on in, in the wounded euro. Though we saw a decent recovery yesterday, that recovery could continue in case the bank reaffirms willingness to battle accelerating inflation and down uh, and uh, downplays the consequences of the war. But even in such case, we cannot uh, call for a bullish reversal in um, in euro dollar. The Fed is expected to tighten much more aggressively than the Fed. Uh, excuse me, the Fed is expected to tighten much more aggressively than the ECB, and that monetary policy divergence, combined with the uncertainties surrounding um, the war, it's unlikely to bring the is very likely to bring the pair under renewed uh, selling interest. 
Now, in case the narrative is more dovish than last time, the euro is likely to resume its prevailing downtrend instantly. Uh, besides the euro, the other two winners of uh, the day were uh, the pound and the loonie. Uh, the former may have received a boost after the UK CPI is accelerated by more than expected, allowing participants to maintain bets that the Bank of England will also need to lift the rates faster than previously thought. As for the latter, its fuel was the outcome of the Bank of Canada decision. Officials of the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points, as was expected, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Now, Governor Macklem specifically said we need higher rates and the economy ha can handle them and added uh, the important thing that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. This puts the Bank of Canada into the group of the major central banks which are planning to move as aggressively as possible in order to control inflation. And thus, we expect the, the loony to, out, to outperform currencies of uh, which the respective central banks are not that hoggish, like the Bank of Japan, which is um, the most dovish among the major ones, the ECB, which we don't expect to be uh, that aggressive, and the RBA. Yes, market expectations with regards to the RBA are very hoggish, but the bank itself has not officially confirmed whether that's uh, realistic. In other words, whether the uh, investor's view is realistic, at least uh, not yet. Uh, the RBA's narrative is uh, much more dovish than the expectations. Uh, now, besides, uh, as for the rest of today's events, uh, besides um, the ECB decision, the only other releases worth mentioning are the US retail sales for March, the initial jobless claims for last week and the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for April. Both the headline and core sales are expected to have accelerated, while the jobless claims are forecast to have increased somewhat. The University of Michigan Index is expected to have slid to 59 from 59.4. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.